So I'm going to give you an example for us to, to start. I'm going to give you an example and then an anecdote. So this is, I give this example because everybody knows what this is like. Imagine how you feel when you go on a first date with somebody or when you're ready to do a, a work presentation. You know, you start to feel quite uncomfortable in your body. You're probably like fidgeting a lot. Maybe you're moving a lot. And you get this kind of, it's called like butterflies, butterflies in your stomach, you know? And obviously it's not like real butterflies put in your stomach. But when I, when I say that, you, in, you kind of instinctively know exactly what I mean. This is a somatized emotion. So this is where you're experiencing so much uncertainty, so much nervousness, so much anxiety that you cannot handle it. And it's kind of like your, your emotions are like a cup. So if you imagine you've got like a cup here, you've filled it up with so much of this emotion that now it starts to flow out of this cup. And when it's coming out, instead of experiencing it as an emotion, we can experience it as either some kind of uh, behavioral pattern or as a physical sensation, like this, this, this kind of this butterfly's feeling in the belly. So it doesn't, it doesn't always express as a somatic sensation. That's actually the last place that it, that it happens. So when this, when this emotion, when this water is flowing out of the cup, and using, using water as, an emotion, as a metaphor for emotion is actually quite, quite appropriate for metaphysical reasons. It's quite, quite funny. But say this water is, is flowing out of the cup. Before it, manif before it like, say it like hits the table, when it hits the table is when it manifests as a, as a physical symptom. There are, there are a couple of other things that can happen before we get to that stage. So the first would be projection. If we're experiencing an emotion that is so overwhelming that we can't handle it, we kind of just, like, we're not even really aware that we're doing it. This projection is a subconscious process. We don't know we're doing it. We kind of push this emotion onto somebody else. So if, if, this, if this happens, the person that we project it onto, it's not actually their emotion. We're projecting it on them. So this, this happens a lot with, this is usually when, we, when we're judging other people. So usually when we're judging other people, is actually because we're experiencing a, a, a thought pattern or a belief or a, an emotion towards ourselves that we can't, we can't handle, we can't accept, we can't see. So we just push it on somebody else instead. So it's like judging somebody else for the way they look or for the way that they make you feel. And you push it onto them and make it their fault or their, their responsibility when actually you're the only person that's responsible for how you feel about anything that is, that is happening. All of your power, all of your emotions are yours. Nobody else's. Yeah, they can influence them and affect them, but they're, they're still your responsibility. So this kind of projection is putting it out. We can also disidentify from them. So a, a really common one that we see here is this disconnect from conscious ego identity and our actual behaviors. So the example that I always use here is you could say, you could imagine you have this neighbor and they say like, they love dogs, you know, they're, oh, I'm a, I love animals. I'm an animal person. I just love animals. Oh, they're, they're fantastic. They're great. But then you've got this little dog and it goes up and it tries to lick his hand and he's like, like he gets panicked and he's like trying to shoo it away, like trying to kick the dog. Like he's terrified. You can see there's a split here. Like he's identified with, his ego is identified with liking dogs, but actually the way that he behaves is he's actually terrified of dogs. And it might be that he's got some fear or some anger or some kind of emotion that he can't that he can't own and he's projecting on the dog and then he's like afraid of the dog because he thinks it's angry but actually he's the angry one because the dog's trying to lick him it's being really friendly he's the one that's trying to kick it so you can see how this is this projection and then this disidentification that's happening and this can also really manifest as other kind of subconscious behavioral patterns that we don't not really aware of or we might have some awareness of, but we're not completely aware why they, why they do it. So this, this can happen with addiction. This can happen with addiction to, to food, to drugs, to alcohol, to sex, to video games, to, to anything. They're all different coping mechanisms, and they're subconsciously like helping us navigate this like muddy water around trauma connected to our emotions. So it can be any kind of addiction, and even... Even some other things, you know, like eating disorders, that's kind of a form of addiction to control in a certain, a certain, a certain format. This can be um, like procrastination. This can be self-sabotage, you know. I, I know this, this person that, that was a fantastic artist and they've been given lots of opportunities to be an artist, but then she ends up always working 
as a cleaner and cleaning toilets because she always sabotages herself out of that thing. This is a, this is a trauma response. This is like a subconscious behavioral pattern that she's not exactly sure why she does it, but has become aware of like, I can do this and people will pay me it, but I'm always working in the toilet. It's like, there's a, there's a split and it's not, there's not fully aware as to, there's not complete clarity as to why this is happening. So this is, these are kind of the expressions of trauma. And when you, when you, when you hear it like this, I, I know a lot of people talk about trauma and they kind of think like, it's like this like backpack that you're carrying that nobody can see, or it's like, you're, you're like, you're hiding it away and nobody can see your trauma. But it's actually quite obvious, you know, you always, you can always see when someone like behaves a bit weird or when they have like a bit of an insecurity around something or it's like, it's really obvious to you, but to them, they're completely oblivious to it or they just don't, they can't see it in any other way. They're very narrow minded in how they can see it. This is usually trauma. But on the deepest level, we actually do carry it inside of us in a way that other people can't see it directly. And this is as symptoms. So... Another example, so I'll give you an anecdote. For me, whenever I'm experiencing emotions, particularly connected to like anger, frustration, um, like boundaries, personal power, anytime I'm experiencing an emotion like this that's outside of my capacity, I, I without exception get a bellyache. Like I get this kind of burning feeling in my stomach, get a bit of like reflux going on, my gut just kind of feels a bit achy, a bit kind of not great. And it's actually this emotion being condensed and spilling out of the cup and manifesting physically inside of my body. And you, so now you would ask the question, okay, why? Why does this happen? Why is it? One of my philosophies is that the body is, is intelligent in all of the things that it does. So you, you might ask the question, well, why, how could this possibly intelligent be intelligent? Like, why would I want my emotions to be manifesting physically inside of my body? That kind of sucks. I don't really want that to be happening because it hurts and it's uncomfortable. So this is usually because it's unsafe for us to experience them in any other way. So usually we've got this, so we've got this three-tiered split, the conscious, the subconscious expression, so like the self-sabotage, procrastination, this projection stuff, and then we've got the somatization at the bottom. If this subconscious either is, is not enough, we can't get the emotion out that way, we can't project it out enough, it will manifest physically, or if it's dangerous for us to do it. Like say, for example, that guy that's, that wants to stroke the dog he doesn't want to stroke the dog, he's terrified of it, but the dog's trying to lick him. If he then starts kicking that dog, but then you come over and you're like, stop kicking my dog, and then you start fighting him, it's now dangerous for him to express that energy in a subconscious way. So instead, he now just represses it and just internalizes that, and he's just in, free, in a freeze state. So the dog comes up to him, and he doesn't respond at all, he's just like, can't look at it, he's really uncomfortable, because he can't access that emotion even as a projection now, he's just rigid. And this is where a lot of people get stuck. They get stuck in freeze, you know, tight shoulders, shoulders up to the ears, gut really clenched, not really moving very much, probably feeling a bit uncomfortable, maybe like sweaty palms, but the hands are cold, maybe cold feet, just not feeling, not feeling very connected, very isolated, very frozen. And this is, this is a freeze response. And this is somatization. This, you can literally think of fight and flight as being this, kind of moving into the subconscious default of like fight it or get away. And then you've got the deeper level, which is freeze. And that literally is somatization at that point. So when you're free in that freeze state, all of that emotion that you're experiencing is just, ooh, getting stuck inside your body. So to fix this, we need to bring the body out of freeze. And we need to kind of melt this ice of this somatized emotion inside the body and bring it back out into emotional expression again. But, but this, can be, this can be challenging. This can take time. Because the reason we did this in the first place, as it's an intelligent response, is it was unsafe to do so. So the, the core principle here, really the core to, to healing trauma in, in, in all of its facets and all of its aspects, is, is safety. Trauma, as, the, as with the definition we used earlier, is anything that happens too fast, it's too loud, or it's too much, too much for just, us to just process at a time. So it's like, trauma is like, wow. So what we need to do is we need to go... We need to sort of revisit the trauma, not always as a conscious thought, but we need to reprocess it on a somatic level like this. Like, wow. So we go through it really slowly and we're able to walk through it at the pace that our current emotional capacity allows us to. And sometimes, say we've got a big trauma that was like, wow, like it's big, big trauma. You could say like sexual assault or some, some like physical assault or like uh, getting arrested or even like a psychedelic experience that went bad, a bad trip, anything like that. It's like, wow, it's so, it's so explosive. 
sometimes we can't always just process through all of that in one go. So sometimes we do like a session and it's like, we go through this bit, but we do it really slowly. So it's like, we're going like this. So we're really feeling through that initial experience. And then that's it. And then that's where the trauma is now frozen at this stage. And then we, the next time we come and revisit it, we move it to here. And then the next time we revisit it, we manage to get it all the way out here. And whatever emotion this was attached to, as we go through this, to this, to this, to this, we're actually practicing this emotion. So if this was, so let's use the, you could use like sexual assault, or let's use, so sexual assault is a really good example, but we can use any, any circumstance where you feel like you're put into freeze because you're unable to, there's no, you have no empowerment, you're completely out of control, you're, you're a victim. And this, this, there's, a, there's a lot of victim theme connected to this. And there's also a lot of victim theme connected to chronic health problems as well, for a very good reason, because it's actually an expression of this, of this same traumatic pattern. So you do have to tackle this as well. This is one place that people get stuck with chronic health problems, is they get stuck feeling like a victim to their chronic health problems. And it's actually just mirroring the trauma that they've experienced. It's now just almost a self-inflicted victimhood, because it's actually this unprocessed trauma that's being held inside the body that needs to be processed. It's, it's vicious, it's, it, it sounds really sinister, and it's a really hard, hard thing to, to go through. But being able to see it this way can be really helpful because you can actually get results, you know? Being stuck with a chronic health problem is really awful. If you've got one or if you know anybody that's had one, you know how much it absolutely ruins people's lives. So to accept that it's possible, and again, accept that it's possible, I'm not saying it is, accept that it's possible that there could be a trauma route to physical health symptoms, expressions, is a place that can be really hard to, to go because when we're talking about this, this somatization process, it, depending on how you look at it, some people might be like, oh, it's in your head. It's not even real. It's like, no, it, it's not in your head. It's in your physical body. And yes, it is real. It does hurt. It does cause pain. If you go to do lab tests, you could, it's very likely that you could see them. You, know? you could have an emotional root cause gastritis and actually see it in a gastroscopy and see that the stomach is inflamed. Like it actually manifests physically in physical tissues. You can see it as inflammation. You can see it as bone spurs. You can see it as actual physical manifestations inside the body. It is real, but the root of it is not in the physical body. It's actually in the emotional body. And that's where you have to work if you want to fix it. Fix it, take care of it, resolve it, heal it. All kind of interchangeable words with applies to different, different situations. So how do, we, how do we work through it? We have to create safety. So this, this initial explosive event is so unsafe. We have to start building safety around it. And we have to probably start at the somatic level. So just as we feel these butterflies in the belly, this somatic expression of the trauma, we have to experience it in the physical body first. So I'll use, a, I'll use a, an actual real world example of something that I experienced with one of my clients in an actual session where we were doing this process. So she was rollerblading and she fell over and she, she banged her knee and she physically damaged her knee. You know, she actually physically hurt her knee. The thing is, when she fell, she experienced lots of emotions of like shame and embarrassment. Because obviously when you fall over, everybody looks at you and some people might laugh. Generally, it's more of an internal thing. You're like, oh no, I fell over. Like you judge yourself and actually other people would generally quite consider it. They're like, oh, can I help you up? Do you need anything? Normally people are actually generally like by default, very loving, caring people. But when we've had experiences, negative experiences in the past, even if it's just one, we then project that onto all of those other negative or potentially negative experiences in the past. So she, she fell over, damaged the knee. The immediate instinct was like, get up straight away. Like get back on your feet. Oh, like, don't look at me. I'm fine. Nothing here. No, nothing to look at. Everything's okay. However, when you do that, this, this trauma loop opened and we've got this physical injury in, inside the leg, like inside of the knee. And that is where the trauma will settle. Because if you've got this physical, this physical injury, the, the emotion that's experienced in that moment, so this shame and embarrassment, it opens this loop of like, this is a, a lot of emotion, this is so much happening at once. You know, you fall, you're in shock, you're scared, you could be terrified, you're like, have I broken my leg? And then you've got like shame and embarrassment and all of this, and it's like so much emotion all at the same time. There's so many layers to this onion and it's just, it's just all too much. And we need to, we need to stay with, with ourselves and we need like co-regulation at this time. So if someone falls like this, the best thing you can actually do is just go and sit on the floor next to them 
don't try and rush them to get up. Just allow them to like process how they're feeling and what they're experiencing. And the body has these natural mechanisms where this trauma loop will open itself and will close itself with time, with space. It will just complete the loop by itself. But what happens in these kind of situations is we have this trauma, it opens this loop, we're like overwhelming emotion, the trauma loop is open, but then we're like, oh, oh, this is overwhelming, I have to take an action, I have to get up. And everyone's like, oh, come on, get up, get up, get up, you're okay. So they all get you up, and then this, this trauma stays stuck. The loop is open, and you never find a resolution to it. And then, this, so this lady went, she did uh, like osteopathy, she worked with somebody that adjusted the knee and like corrected it on a physical level, but she was still having pain and it wasn't healing properly, it wasn't settling. And this is because the fascia, the fascia is like this thin mesh web that coats all of the muscles and all of our organs and everything. But this is where the, the trauma got held inside this fascia around the knee. So even though the knee had its structural, it, the structural sort of like misalignment corrected, the fascia is holding this unprocessed emotion which holds the fascia in this rigid, like frozen state. So the fascia, instead of being like this flexible, allowing the, the, the tendons and the ligaments and the bones and the joints and everything to move in this fluid way like it should be able to, it's stuck in this like frozen, traumatized, literally freeze response of unprocessed emotion. So what we did was we just felt back into these sensations and felt this pain and this discomfort. And it causes the, the muscles and the ligaments and the fascia to, to fire in a way to complete that loop. So it's like it's open. And as we were just feeling into these sensations in, in the knee, the, the muscles began to fire, you know, the hamstrings, the calves, the quads, they all started like triggering and spasming and even like in the lower back, like all the muscles that were connected here, they all started like activating. So her leg was like moving and twitching and she was staying with it and feeling through these emotions like, oh, I'm feeling this fear. Now I'm feeling this terror. Now I'm feeling this embarrassment and this shame and like working through the, these layers and experiencing what what she didn't, what, what was opened, but was never closed. And we just stayed with it. And it, the body knows how to fix itself. The body knows how to heal its own trauma. It knows how to do these things. It just needs to be provided the correct, the correct environment and the right pace, the right, the right speed of, of this process. So we actually did this over two sessions. So one, one session we did like this and it brought it down to nearly complete. And then the next session, it was a bit more violent movements. And then it just like completed itself and, it, and it's fixed and it's gone and there's no problem anymore because the trauma loop saw itself around to completion. The physical side of it had healed, but the fascia was stuck in that like mangled, frozen state. So we had to bring that fluidity back to it, which come, you're, you're nat like the, the natural state of a human is fluidity. Like the, 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 the fascia will return and it will have this flexibility, this fluidity to it, if we can stay with it through this, through this process. So this, this is an example of, acute, of, an, of an acute injury and how it caused a somatization of, a, of an emotion in, in the process. But this can happen, this is just one really cool way of looking at it, one really kind of acute example, but this can happen in so many different ways. You know, if you're a child and you're experiencing like abuse and neglect over and over and over again, then this, this piles up in the body and it, and it gets stored as, as, a, as physical experiences, physical manifestations inside the body. If you've got, so you have to be really careful with your words as well, you know, your subconscious mind doesn't understand sarcasm. It doesn't understand jokes. Like if you've got a neighbor that's always annoying you and you say, you're always saying to your family like, oh, he's such a pain in the ass. Oh, he's such a pain in the ass. Oh, he's, he's such a pain in my neck. You know, it's like your body is like, oh, we were experiencing this emotion and you're telling us that this is a pain in our ass. Okay, here we go. We'll somatize this emotion into our ass. And it's like, okay, now you've got colitis. Now you've got hemorrhoids. Now you've got colorectal bleeding. Oh, it's a pain in my neck. Here you go. Now you can have a nerve subluxation. Now you need to go and see a chiropractor every single week. It's actually being adjusted correctly, but the fascia is still holding this unprocessed emotion, this, this, this experience that we didn't manage to see through to completion. So even if you do have a really annoying neighbor, it's not his emotion of frustration or anger or resentment. It's your emotion. And if you can't process it, you'll try and project it onto them and you'll say, he's really annoying. He really frustrates me. It's his fault. And then if that doesn't really get you anywhere, then it will just, oh, he's a pain in my ass. He's a pain in my neck. And it's like, oh, now you've got a neck problem. Now you've got, now you've got a, now you've got a, a colorectal problem. It's like your, your, your subconscious mind doesn't get the joke. It doesn't understand the sarcasm. It literally takes it seriously. And it's like, okay, this is supposed to go here. Let's just stick that trauma in there. That's a good place for it to hold. And there's also like metaphysical affinities to different areas of your body, different organs are connected to different emotions, like 
the stomach can be really connected to the anxiety, also anger. The liver can be really connected with anger as well. Gallbladder is more resentment. Um, colon is really connected with like despair and like deep, deep levels of fear. Small intestine can be connected to all of them. It's where we basically process all of our all of our emotions. Your lungs can be really connected to grief. You can think heart, like hatred, also sadness as well. Like and your face, your face is just how you express all of your emotions. So you, if you've got like for me, I know I'm still working through a lot of this myself. I've got like tension in my face all of the time and all the fascia in my face is still really tight. I know it's not a physical problem. I know it's an emotional problem. And I have to work through healing these layers of these unprocessed emotions that are now holding back my ability to express myself like physically as not being able to move my face as much as I should really be able to. I don't have full this, this full fluid, flexible face. It's kind of rigid. It's not, it doesn't move as, as well as it should. So... This is how this is how trauma actually causes physical health problems. It, it, it actually really does. It's not just like this complementary thing on the side. It's not just this side thing. It actually could directly cause physical manifestations of pain, discomfort, symptoms, chronic health problems in, inside your physical body. And it's real. It's not in your head. It's not in your mind. It's not that the, it's not that the pain doesn't exist. This is, it, this is real. Chrissy in the chat says, the body keeps the score. That is, a, is exactly true. And this is a really cool, it's a really cool book that you can read on the topic. So there's, so some, so what do we do from here? What do you do? If you're interested in this, you've liked the video so far, you've liked what I've been talking about, and you want to explore this further to actually like get some results. You can try working with somebody that, uh, that works in a somatic based modality. So I have my own version of this called the Illumina method. You can go on YouTube and type William Dickinson, the Illumina method. I've got several videos that talk about this in deeper levels of detail. So if you're interested in more info, you can go and check those out. You can also read a couple of books. So there's one from Peter A. Levine, who's the founder of Somatic Experiencing, which is a type, which is also another type of modality based on the, this kind of somatic work. I believe it's called Awakening the Tiger or the Tiger Within or something like that. Something about Tiger. If you type Peter Levine book, you'll probably find it. You can also check out The Body Keeps the Score. This is another really interesting book that looked at um, PTSD with war veterans and how they could trigger physical symptoms, physical manifestations. They could activate the, these veterans' immune systems just by having them watch footage of, of the wars that they had participated in. So there's this really strong connection to this emotional stimulus and this, these emotions that we can be experiencing and how it affects our physiology. And this is documented, you know, this is science. This isn't just like, oh, like this is like some woo woo, like this is science, this is, this is real. Like they have lab tests, they have done this. Like this is, this is real. And I, I mean, if, if that's not enough, I've seen this myself, myself and with my clients, you know, I've seen people have chronic health problems that they go to every single doctor, they go to every single specialist, They've done talk therapy, they've done CBT, they've done hypnosis, they've done, they've done everything and they still have health problems and they're like, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it is just genetic, maybe there is nothing I can do. Because that's what everybody tells them, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, there, there are answers. You just have to go one layer deeper. So like those other modalities, they're, to, they're working in the conscious and the subconscious. If your trauma is so deep that it's held in the somatic, you have to work in the somatic. You have to work at this level. So go there, try it. See what you can see what you can find, and if you have a chronic pain problem, if you have chronic health problems, if you have chronic symptoms, they are all really good indicators that you need to to do this work. But even if you don't, you know, even if you're a fairly normal person, if you aren't singing and dancing and and loving your life, if you aren't able to go out and just talk with strangers and and be confident, if you aren't making loads and loads of money, you know, if your life isn't smooth and if it, if, it, if it isn't going well you know if your life just doesn't feel as good as you you kind of deep down in your deep down in your gut you know it could be this is an amazing place to start because there's a good likelihood that there's there's blocks there's traumas there's things that are holding you back from the best life that you could possibly have but you can't even see it because it's not conscious it's subconscious and it's somatic and this is a really good place to start so check out those books Check out my other videos. If you want to do a session with me, you want to try the Illumina method yourself, let me know. Leave me a comment and I'll, um, I'll, I'll reach out to you and we can get that arranged. We do actually have in the Healing with William community, so this is like a private community that I run, it's 30 euros a month. We actually do group Illumina method sessions. We've done two so far. And 
The first was just about exploring these somatic sensations inside of our bodies and just experiencing them. So developing a deeper level of intimacy with these and working on healing that trauma and finding that emotional root cause. And the second is actually the, the next level to this, to this process where we can kind of sometimes get very hyper fixated and really hyper vigilant around our health, our health problems and our symptoms. And we're always focused on them. Like we always have this feeling in our body. So we're always focused on it. Like, oh my gut problem, I need to focus on it. Or all oh my pain, I need to hold my awareness there. And it feels like it's calling your attention all the time. Sometimes it's actually that holding and that focusing that stops it from healing. And we need to allow our focus to move away from this pain, away from this discomfort, away from this torture, away from this suffering, away from all of this negativity, because that's what we're really good at. That's not where we need to develop emotional capacity. We actually need to develop emotional capacity for pleasure for relaxation, for safety, for enjoyment, for feelings of bliss and ecstasy and just somatic pleasure, like your body just feeling good. And being hyper fixated on the, on the problem all of the time or the pain can actually hold that pain in place and stop it from healing. And we actually need to dilute our focus and focus on something else. So it depends. But we've got one exercise for each so far and we also do one of these Illumina Method group sessions every single month. So if you have any interest in joining the Healing with William community, we'd love to have you. We don't just do that as well. So we do one, we do, so this is one of the four calls that we do every single month. We also work on the physical side of this. You know, we do, we've got gut health, we've got, we just did a workshop on light and how to optimize your circadian rhythm, how to optimize your light. That was actually a guest workshop. So we, we got a guest in to actually talk about this, who they're more their area of expertise. Next week, we've got a gut health workshop coming up where we're going to be talking all about the gut, digestion, microbiome, probiotics how you heal leaky gut, all of that sort of stuff. We do, we talk about testing, we do lab, we do loads of cool stuff in there. Like if you're on your healing process and you've even found this video even slightly interesting, that is definitely the best place for you to be on the internet for your, for your healing process. The community is so warm, it's so engaging. The person that actually came and did this, this interview with us on talking about light, loved the community so much, he's actually coming to join it himself. You know, it's really an amazing community. So if you're if you have any interest in learning more about this or coming to join the community, definitely just let me know because we would really love to have you. It's a really great place and people are really getting results. You know, I've got people eating ice cream again. One of the one of them that was on a carnival diet just had steak and chips, had some pastry, also had some ice cream as well. Lots of ice cream going on in there. We have another another person that was sensitive to dairy. She's now eating uh, ice cream as well. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. People are actually getting results. It's not just like support group that's like come and complain about your symptoms and just, just moan about it and stay sick. You know, it's like, how do you actually take the situation that you're at and do, and what do you need to implement for you to get better? And people are doing it and they're actually getting the results. You know, it's not just a, it's not just theory anymore. People are really doing it. So if you have any interest, just leave me a little comment. I'll reach out and send you an invitation. Hope you found this really interesting and helpful. And if you need anything from me, just reach out and let me know. I'm always happy to, to help, happy to talk, happy to connect, have a conversation with you. I'm just another human just like you. I know you see me on the screen and you maybe like project all of these feelings of like, wow, like he's the master. Like, oh, he's figured it all out. Wow, he's the guru. I'm just some dude. You know, I'm literally just some dude on the internet that figured out my health problems and I want to help you do it as well. So I'm not like on this like unattainable pedestal, literally like talk to me. I'm just a human as well. So if you need anything, if you have any questions, do just reach out and let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.